I have the f good fortune to take care of a many number of patients with uh, Chiari malformation, so I thought I'd use this opportunity to talk a little bit about it. There are multiple types of Chiari malformations, one, two, three, Chiari four. Three and four are pretty un rare, and not, we're not dis gonna discuss them today. Nor Chiari two, which is associated with myelomeningocele, or what people commonly call spina bifida very, very different entity, even though it shares the, the same name. So I'm gonna focus on Chiari 1 malformation, which is the, the patients that I care for and get asked quite a bit about this. So many pa people will maybe suffering from a headache or some other problem, and they'll go and get an MRI of their brain, and the radiologist will read the film and say that there's a Chiari 1 malformation and you know seek out neurology and neurosurgical consultation. And people come in all scared and they, and they have this problem and want to know what they need to do. So the radiologist will read a Chiari 1 malformation when the back part of the brain, an area called the tonsils of the cerebellum, which is way back here under those thick muscles in the skull, when those droop down through the hole at the base of the skull, if they droop down more than a few millimeters, they'll say there's a Chiari malformation. Now that's technically what it is based upon the MR, the, the imaging data. However, the vast majority of people who have droopy tonsils that droop down a little bit, they don't need anything done for this quote Chiari malformation and it's just a, a finding. Maybe like having a bigger nose than somebody else or a droopier earlobe or something like that. It, it really is of no consequence. So the question is, is how do you figure out which patients the Chiari is a problem and what you should do about it and which patients you shouldn't, you should just leave them be. So this is where it gets a little complicated, but our brains float in some fluid. And every time our heart beats, every time we take a deep breath, our brains pulsate. And anybody who's looked closely at a newborn, and there's a little soft spot at the top of the head, you can actually watch the fluid pulsating at the top of the head. Well, as an adult, our soft spot is gone, our skull is solid. So when our brain pulsates, no, our eyes don't pop out with every pulsation. What happens is the fluid that's around the brain has to rush out of the skull. And it rushes down through the hole at the base of the skull, this foramen magnum. And then when the brain shrinks, that fluid has to rush back up again. And so with every breath and with every heartbeat, the brain pulsates just like the heart does. That fluid has to flow in and out so that the brain can expand and then shrink, expand and then shrink. Well, if those tonsils, that back part of the brain, go down that hole and it's too snug, then the fluid can't flow back and forth the way it should. If the fluid can't flow back and forth the way it should, then it can cause lots of trouble. Commonly things like headache and uh, pain at the back of the neck, or problems when you cough or, or grunt, you know, like having a bowel movement. Um, these are situations where that fluid flow problem gets accentuated and it becomes even more problematic. And that's where potentially a, a neurosurgeon needs to help fix that fluid flow problem. So those are the patients with Chiari that need something done. Now, if I get a patient in my clinic and they have intermittent headaches and they have this Chiari, even if I think they might be having some fluid flow problems, sometimes caution or oftentimes caution is the best way to go. Don't rush off to surgery. In a day of clinic, it's not uncommon for me to see one or two or even three patients who are referred to me for the Chiari symptoms and for this descent of the tonsils. And yet I operate on very few of these patients, probably less than 10%, even maybe as low as 5%. And so what you have to understand is two things. One, this is typically in younger people. Um, it's typically in late teens through early 30s that we see pe people coming in. Um, and I want you to think about how common headache is in this group. Um, lots of use of uh, coffees and, and teas and other stimulants or these energy drinks. Lots of sleep deprivation, whether from school needs or partying, lots of stressors at an early point in the life, new parents, new jobs, moving. Lots of things go on in these early years 
And so getting headaches is a pretty common thing. And nowadays, so many people have access to getting MRIs. You, know, you take a common problem, headaches, you get a lot of MRIs, and next thing you know, you're gonna find a significant number of people have this modest amount of descent of the tonsils. The key here is most of these people don't need surgery. You really don't wanna go operating on somebody because they have headaches and do a surgery that potentially could even cause headaches. Um, so caution is always the best way. If the problem is very dramatic and the fluid flow problem is really a big, a big issue, usually what I will do is get a special type of MRI where I can actually look at the fluid flow on the MRI. It's a movie MRI instead of a static MRI. And I can make sure that I can see that the fluid's blocked or that it actually is flowing. If the fluid's flowing, then that really proves that the fluid flow is not the issue. And so trying to fix the Chiari isn't, isn't indicated. If that movie MRI, or what we call a cine MRI, shows that the fluid is obstructed and the symptoms are really disabling and you're confident and the patient's confident that these things are related, then as a surgeon, what I can do is I can go into the back of the head here and I can open up some of the skull, open up some of the covering that's over this area and make that hole at the base of the skull bigger. And that allows the tonsils to still stay where they are, but this allows the fluid now to rush around it. And this can be a very, very rewarding operation for patients who are suffering from these problems um, because it, it, it can really help tremendously alleviate these symptoms.